was per, this is probably two million cells of, of, of wow. two million cells of algae per milliliter. And how long does it get, take to get to that point? Uh, ten days. Ten days. Oh. Partition, you didn't have that room, so I really kept everybody out of here unless it was unless they were working. Um, but at this point, we've got the mass culture side to grow this species of algae, and then the other room. And how fast? So um, much denser, a different type of, a different nutritional profile. And is that uh, oxide okay? Um, and you know, lots of light because they're plants. And then the shelf in front is are those beakers. We're about to have five full-time technicians. Um, Section seven. Seven regular employees at the right? So five technicians, one inch, one Kupu American intern, and one first meeting I had lunch with uh, Alan Jonah. Oh. From D Bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. And he said, Yeah, this thing looks like it's about to get crazy. Do you know Dan Dennison? I think these are was per, this was probably two million cells of of, of wow. two million cells of algae per milliliter. And how long does it do you get? take to get to that point? Uh, ten days. Ten days, oh. Partition, we didn't have that room. So I really kept everybody out of here unless it was, unless they were working. Um, but at this point, we've got the mass culture side to grow this species of algae and then the other room. And how long fast? So um, much denser, it's a different type of, a different nutritional profile. And is that uh, the oxide okay? Um, and you know, lots of light because they're plants. And then the shelf in front is are those beakers. We're about to have five full-time technicians. Um, it's actually seven. Seven regular employees at the right? So five technicians, one inch, one Kupu American intern, and one first meeting I had lunch with uh, Alan Jonah. Oh. From D Bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. And he said, Yeah, this thing looks like it's about to get crazy. Do you know Dan Dennison? I said, I'm not going to get too excited. I'm just going to fill this up. It's going to take a little bit. So. That's all right. Yeah. Running. Running. Oh. Really? 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 Oh. Really?
Uh, the first successful outplanting of urchins was in 2011. The urchin hatchery was started because an invasive seaweed was introduced into Kaneohe Bay in the 1970s. That seaweed was originally brought in to try and see if we could grow seaweed to produce the product carrageenan, uh, which is an emulsifier. It's used in many different types of food. They wanted to see if they could aquaculture this particular seaweed. Over the last 10 years, we've managed to outplant sea urchins in Kaneohe Bay. And prior to the outplanting, a lot of the patch reefs were completely covered with seaweed. Right now we're in a situation where we're maintaining 5% or less seaweed cover on all of the patch reefs in Kaneohe Bay. As a matter of fact, where we are right now is we're done with our initial um, clearing of the patch reefs and what we're doing at the moment is what we call maintenance. As of, uh, as of June of last year, there were 500,000 urchins out. At the moment, the sea urchin hatchery has produced a little over 560,000 urchins. We expect to hit about 600,000 urchins sometime around Christmas of this year. So 20, 30 years ago in Kaneohe Bay, many of the patch reefs were completely smothered, in some cases up to one to two feet of invasive seaweed. Right now what we're seeing is coral cover on those patch reefs where the seaweed was before. Today we, uh, we brought uh, about 1,400 uh, sea urchins that our, our hatchery at uh, AFRC raises for us. Um, we're outplanting the sea urchins on invasive algae that was introduced uh, to Kaneohe Bay in the 70s. Our main objective is to keep it to low levels in the bay and also to keep it only in Kaneohe Bay uh, with not letting it expand outside to other areas. The, the urchins act like little goats. We, we put them out there and they, they graze it down. Um, our, our approach is a two-pronged approach. We, uh, when the algae levels get high enough, we actually manually remove it with a vacuum and uh, by hand, we handbag it. The reefs with a higher coral cover and a higher algae cover are moved to the priority. Uh, we survey them every year and there is a slight trend that shows that the reefs we ignore one year are the higher ones the following year, so we, we keep rotating through. 